we have so far considered problems which were all a bit artificial. Uh, they were very simplified um, and intended to illustrate the basic working principles of a um, quantum algorithm, a quantum computer. Now I would like to move a little bit closer to problems that are actually practically relevant. And in doing so, I would like to show you um, a slightly different paradigm for quantum computation. So far we have looked at two. One is the the gate-based universal quantum computer, um, of which we considered some very, very simple examples, um, uh, like the Deutsch, Joshua, and Simon algorithms. Then we talked briefly about measurement-based computation, which is a different kind of computation paradigm, but I only explained the basic idea without uh, considering specific examples. And here we will look at um, another class of problems which can be tackled with another family or another type of algorithms. Now the type of problems that we are going to look at are classical optimization problems which take the form more specifically of minimization problems. So there is some kind of function that has to be minimized. And I would like to show you uh, a simple example, and that's the so-called max cut problem. That's the following. Consider a graph with nodes and edges. Here we have four nodes and um, Many of them, but not all of them, are connected with edges. Each edge that you see in the graph carries some weight. Uh, and the weights are labeled by Wij, yeah, where Ij refers to the two nodes that are connected. And we want to assume that all weights that are sh all weights that refer to edges shown in the graph are positive and uh, the order in which we label the nodes doesn't matter so the, there's no direction in the graph now such a graph can be cut in two and there are many different ways of cutting a graph. And um, when we cut a graph, we basically separate the nodes into two subsets. And um, we can assign a variable to each uh, node and give it the value plus one in one subset and we can give it the value minus one in the other subset. Let's call this variable zi where i refers to the to the node. Yeah. If we do it in this way then uh, actually this um, allows us immediately to define an indicator function which tells us which of the edges were cut. Look at a pair of nodes labeled i and k and consider the function 1 minus zi zk over 2. If the two nodes are in the same subset, then this indicator function vanishes. If they are in different subsets, then the product of the z's is minus 1, and the indicator function has the value 1. 
Yeah. So assigning the variables to the nodes in this way also allows us to determine easily which connection between pairs of nodes were cut and which were not cut. Now, here's uh, yet another possible cut uh, of this particular graph. And now we assign a value to a cut. And the value of a cut is uh, the total weight of all the edges that I have cut, that, I, that were broken by the cut. And so in this case, all the red edges were cut, they were broken. Each of these edges has a certain weight, carries a certain weight. And if we add up all the weights of the broken edges, then we get the value of the cut. And the goal is to maximize this value. So given a graph, given an arbitrary assignment of weights to the edges, we want to find that cut which maximizes the value. Now, classically, this is a hard problem. There's no known algorithm that um, solves the max cut problem with resources that scale less than exponentially with the number of nodes. And so all known algorithms classically, they require resources that scale exponentially with the number of nodes. Now, so this is one particular example of a classical optimization problem. We can relate such a problem to the problem of searching the ground state of an assembly of qubits in the following way. Recall the value of such a cut. It's the total weight of the broken edges. So we have a sum over weights of edges and we count only those which were broken. For this, we can make use of the indicator function that I so showed you on the previous page. So if we multiply, we, we sum over all the edges, but we multiply the weight with this indicator function, then effectively, we sum over the broken edges only. And this is the function that we want to maximize. Uh, we can sort of multiply out uh, the um, expression in the numerator. So we have, we have two sums then. Uh, one is a sum over weights in which this variable z doesn't occur. And then we subtract from that another sum in, in which we have the weights and also this variable zi and zk. Yeah. Now, maximizing the value of the cut is equivalent to minimizing the second sum. Yeah. Because what we, when we vary the cut, what we do is we change um, the two subsets of the nodes. So we change the assignment of values to the variables zi. Yeah? So we really only need to consider the term uh, which depends on the variable z. This is the second sum. Um, and this second sum is also called a cost function. Yeah? It's a function of this collection of variables z. And because we have a minus sign in front, maximizing the value of the cut amounts to minimizing the cost function. And many classical optimization problems, not all of them, but many of them can be cast in this form that you have some cost function which you need to minimize.
Now consider the following map from this classical problem to a problem concerning qubits. Uh, so we have the nodes in in the two subgroups with two possible values of the variable z, either plus one or minus one. And on the other side, we have qubits, which can be in basis states zero or one. And so consider the map where you map each node to a qubit. And if the node belongs to the subgroup with where the variable has the value plus one, then you map that to a qubit in the basis state zero. And if the node is in this in a subgroup where the variable has the value minus one, then you map that to a qubit in basis state one. Then the cost function for the classical problem can be mapped to a Hamiltonian for the qubits. The cost function for the classical problem has that form that we already saw. The Hamiltonian on the other side for the qubits is completely analogous. The variables z have become Pauli z operators um, with a label zi or zk, meaning that they refer to that particular qubit. When you evaluate the expectation value of the Hamiltonian in the state of the qubits, and the states are defined in the way that we discussed. Yeah? So uh, whenever um, a node in the subgroup has the value of the variable plus one, then the qubit, the corresponding qubit is in the basis state zero. Then remember, um, the basis states are eigenstates of Pauli z. The, uh, the basis state zero is an eigenstate of Pauli z with eigenvalue plus one, and the basis state one is an eigenstate with eigenvalue minus one. So if you apply the Hamiltonian to the basis state now of all the qubits, then every qubit in the basis state zero will give you a plus one when the uh, Pauli operators applied to that basis state and every basis state one will give you an eigenvalue minus one. So the basis state of all the qubits, yeah, so the composite state of all the qubits is an eigenstate of this Hamiltonian and the eigenvalue is exactly equal to the cost function that you have on the left-hand side. Now, the classical optimization problem consists in finding that assignment of um, values to the variable z that minimizes the cost function. And this corresponds in the qubit case to finding that multi-qubit basis state which minimizes the energy. So which has which has the corresponds to the lowest possible eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian, and that is the ground state. Yeah, so essentially we have mapped the problem of minimizing the cost function to a problem of minimizing the um, energy of the qubit state and that means finding the ground state of this Hamiltonian.